Hello, I'm Donald Leggett and welcome to Share Views, brought to you by the financial website London South East. Today, respected independent oil analyst Malky Graham Wood exclusively reveals his 2018 interim bucket list review with several impressive winners in the past six months and only one standing loser. <laughs> welcome, Malky. Thank you. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Well, this is, this is a biggie. I'm very intrigued with what you have to tell me. Um, thank you for a bit of an exclusive today, as we, or as you rather, release spectacular interim numbers, and we've got one company in and one company out, so uh, we can't wait. 2017, you described as a dis disappointment, but then you decided to hold on to several stocks like Rockhopper, Premier, uh, Hurricane, Far, Faro, Echo, which you thought had the potential to do better, and amazingly, they came good. Um, and we have a range of <laughs> in the top nine. Up fifteen percent, up to uh, up to up seventy three percent. Raw copper yeah, up seventy three percent, and the downside was Pantheon Resources, run by the lovely Jay Cheatham. Yeah, the solitary disaster. So, what was the problem with two thousand and seventeen? Why did everything go sideways, and why did the fundamentals prove much more positive in the first half of two thousand and eighteen? Uh, yes, it's interesting because I think that in 2017, although the oil price had had a very good run, and, and obviously it wasn't quite as good as it, it is at the moment, but it was running up nicely, you know, and the, the, the low had been as far back as February 2016. Uh, but the market always lagged, the oil you know, the sector always lagged the oil price. People didn't really quite believe it. Uh, and what is more, at the time... So the individual uh, share, share of stock prices lagged. Yeah, lagged yeah. The, so the, only the one price. or two went up very quickly, and almost all the rest of people said, I want to see it before I can actually believe it. At the same time, of course, oil companies were cutting their costs dramatically, and in the three years to now, some of them uh, have cut to, uh, by 70% their costs. I mean, it's a huge amount. Uh, in the two years to then, it was more like 50%. So they've actually got, you know, they're double whammy winners. The oil prices has more than doubled and the, the costs have halved. So, you know, it's only now that those results are really beginning to be seen. And in some companies, they still haven't been seen. Mm -hmm. So what I was trying to do, you know, when you ask about, you know, sort of the, 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 the picks for this year back in January, comes out in February, um, were to try and say, were the stocks that didn't perform last year because I got them wrong and it wasn't going to happen, or were they just, it's just a matter of timing? And if you look at the stocks, I mean, we'll go to them later, but if you look at the things like Premier and uh, Rock Hopper, yeah, I believed in Sea Lion. Uh, it was a much more difficult believe at 40 and $50. But at $75, Sea Lion makes out like a bandit. And therefore, uh, although Premier are to a certain extent running the show, um, they, uh, and they've got a, a lot of debt, it, it would make sense to, to go ahead. So I'm expecting a, uh, an FID later on in the year. So... You know, you can see both those stocks are up by 75 and 73 percent, respectively, the same sort of reasons. Premier have got other reasons, uh, but but then, and then you have stocks, you know, which had come in at the sort of top there, you know, like Far, which is an Australian listed company, which not many people know much about. No, only to few. Yes, <laughs> but you know that 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 that's been a slow burner for a while. I mean, that that stock is up what short 50 percent, um, and I think there's a load more to come. Uh, from FAR. Uh, Kath Norman, who runs FAR, uh, is a very, very smart person. And not only do I expect them to make, uh, make progress on their... Uh, they're in with uh, Cairn in Senegal, for example, uh, which is out to arbitration at the moment. But they've also got a very, very interesting, very high risk, uh, well, in the Gambia, coming up either at the end of this year or beginning of next. Uh, and they've done an amazing farm out with Petronas for that. So... So I think that you know I would expect more more to come from them, and you know, and then we had Faro, which was, you know, actually one of the first to really perform uh, very well indeed. Because um, what happened that uh, I mean they're the best company pretty much in the sector across the board, the best exploration record over a long period of time. Make the you know acquire the acreage, quite a lot of it in in North Sea, Norwegian North Sea, and so on. Big tax breaks there. Acquire the acreage, drill it out quite often successful, develop it. If it turns out to be quite big, they'll farm out a little bit of it to, f to finance the rest of it. So they've got a great portfolio. What do you see the next six months holding? More good news? So, yes, I do. I mean, I think that there are one or two stocks, you know, if you look at something like a Merisur, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's making real money. I mean, it's, uh, 
it's probably you know selling five thousand barrels a day it's uh, seventy five dollars a barrel uh, and the stock price is sixteen p or something which it was you know a year ago it's uh, so it's, it's hardly changed it's down it's what down two point six percent this year so far when it should have been up twenty or more um, so you know there are companies that haven't really part, taken part in that president energy in in Argentina you know echo is doing you know very well because of a couple of wells in Argentina but president are drilling a number of wells. They made a fantastic acquisition from Chevron. Inter- Cher- interesting company. Yeah, yeah and, the sh- and the, sh- and the uh, uh, share issue. Great boss, great yeah, CEO. Yeah, that's right, Peter Levine. And, sh- and the share issue was just 10p at the end of last year. It's now 9.6p. It's absolutely absurd. This company is making money you know, like it was going out of style and should be a lot, a lot higher. And Peter Levine, as you say, is a, a serious character, isn't he? He's a he's tough made, cookie. He's made serious money in the oil industry already. He, he certainly has. I mean, he, you know, and, and he's come back. And he's what is more is that you know because when president started originally, it had one or two other things, and it and, and it had a streamer about eighteen months ago, which he's put behind him. And he, out of anybody in the industry, is saying, you know, I'm going to get this right. I'm absolutely going to prove to people that I'm going to get this right. And so far. It, the market haven't, haven't worked it out, but it's one of the cheapest stocks in the, in the marketplace, which is why it's in the in the in the the bucket list, and it's not going anywhere. And you just told me it's one one in and one out. So who's in and who's out? Well, I'm afraid we do have to lose Pantheon. Uh, we, we've all learned lessons from Pantheon, and I'm the very first person to to put my hands up. Um, you know, I like Jay a lot, and you know he's done a, he did a great job. The first year of the of the of the bucket list, ironically. In uh, 2016, it was the top. It was up, it up for almost 750 percent. You know, I still believe that that part of Texas and in the area where they are, uh, they've got acreage which could yield them a, a significant amount of uh, hydrocarbons. But operationally, it keeps going wrong. Um, they've had isn't this issues. just a classic oil and gas story though? Yeah, I mean but issues which I mean and, 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 up 750 you know, percent. Water yeah. in the wells. Big problems, oh, yeah. big technical yeah. issues. And, and, and when I well yeah. run, but even yeah. well run companies can go. No, and, and I should have, um, you know, I, as I put my hands up because you know there are plenty of people who lost money in this, and some of them would have stayed in it because I stayed in it. And I, uh, even back in February, I should have said, right, we, you know, the, what they say, you know, the first cut is the cheapest, get rid of it, and then, well, they, that's right. I that's mean, a good yeah. line. and 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 they do that because because you suddenly think things are going wrong, you say, oh, we believe the underlying story, and. You know, all my investment um, ideas are because I see long-term value. There's probably long-term value in Pantheon, but we can't have it in a, a list of stocks of which it's dragging down. I mean, you, it's the you, only stock which isn't you, down significantly you, you, at all. Your bucket list is 18 stocks big. Yeah. A much larger uh, sector. You've chosen 18. Why have you chosen 18 stocks? What's your, what's your portfolio based on? What's well, your philosophy? Well, the philosophy is interesting. 18 isn't just a number that pulled out of the air. It was, it was going to be a baker's dozen to start with three years ago. Actually, it came to me um, from a guy called Adrian Collins. He used to run uh, Gartmore and now runs um, you know, another, he's the chairman of, uh, of Lion Trust and another asset management company, who didn't have a huge uh, investment in, in energy stocks. But he came to me said, I've been in the industry 40 years, and I know commodity cycles when I see one. And like, So this was in the third quarter of 2015. Oil was flat on its back. It was only six months away from the low of $27. And he said, I know nothing about oils, and you know lots about oils, but I know lots about commodities. And in every commodity in the cycle, and I think were towards the bottom of the cycle. He was calling Can, the bottom of the cycle. He was trying to do that. He didn't mind whether it was six or even 12 months wrong. Mm-hmm. Because it was for a longer term, which is why it was uh, called the bucket list. Mm-hmm. It might have been called a small investment trust. Lots of people have asked me to put all the stocks in the bucket list in one thing and get it quoted. But, but, do, but do, doesn't but, your bucket list mm-hmm. prove that you can you can get all the stocks right, yeah. but you can't get the timing right? Because no, it's not, you can't. So it's, it's not possible. So I'm get, not. not you know, mark, I'll, I'll come not, back to the market not timing. Not the timing in. Not yeah. even the market no, timing no, no, out. No. And I'll come back to timing later on because right. it's, not, it's not my ball game. But the point is that. So what I tried to do for him and for the readers of the blog was to say. Right, I'm going to give you, you know, 12 or 15 stocks. It starts off as being 14, I think. There have to be a sort of constant themes. Companies have to have a good portfolio of assets, not, rel- not reliant on other members of their, of their syndicate, i.e. when somebody decides that a rich person at Exxon says, we're going to go and do this, because at the time we were talking about low oil prices, that they've got, the, they've got money in the bank in order to be able to cover their own costs. They don't have to come to the market for a rescue rights issue or anything like that. But as I say, good quality management who can see the longer term and the ability to, to see real value being added. Now, the other thing about it was that 
in this sort of theory about it being a bucket list or a portfolio or whatever, it did have stocks with much more risk and stocks with, that, with, with, with less risk. I mean, the less risk at the time were things like Ithaca and Farrow, who turned out to be right at the top of the list. But last year, for example, I put Jersey Oil and Gas in there. Jersey Oil and Gas were drilling one well last year with Statoil in the North Sea. You know, if that well hadn't come in, it would have, you know, wouldn't have been the end of the world for them, but they would have gone back a long way. As it was, the share price, which started off at 40p or whatever, went to five quid, came back a bit. It's now two quid. It's starting to run out because they're drilling it again because it was a success. You know, you shouldn't try. I, I always say don't try and pick out stocks. I mean, they're all there. If you want to pick out one for various reasons, look for one with high beta or low beta, then fine. But, but don't blame you. And don't blame me. <laughs> yeah, because timing, I'm there to try and decide that there's a lot of value in this stock. Timing is, is, is up to the, 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 the investors. We've literally just found that out, haven't we? Yeah. You're, you're absolutely picking the right stocks, but the, the, the timing is, yeah. is such and a so tricky you, thing. You, you had to believe in, in, in some of these stocks to, mm. to make it work. And you've got stocks like SDX, and Paul Welsh is doing a fantastic job mm. at SDX. He's in only two countries. You know, he's in Egypt and Morocco. Uh, he's had two big drilling campaigns in each one in each country. Uh, the Moroccan one was a fantastic success, seven out of nine. Uh, he's now selling gas, which he's discovered. You know, the, 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 the local gas price in Morocco is uh, $10.5. It's going to be 12 next year. His costs are about half a dollar a MCF. So your expertise is you yeah. get to see inside these different companies. Yeah. And uh, then uh, it, uh, spread that back into the marketplace. Yeah. In terms of timings, what advice would you give in terms of uh, when to buy and when to uh, take, your, take your winnings and run? Um, I did explain to you earlier on that, uh, that timing is, is it, well, it, not it's, not, it's not my, 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 my bag really because what I'm trying to do is to say but our audience need, 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 yeah. need to consolidate uh, yeah. the winnings. How yeah, do they, and I how do, do that. And, and, but when stocks, you know, have done really well, you know, I'm, I'm more than happy to say in the blog, you know, this share has tripled or whatever, and you know, it may consolidate. This was a problem we had with Hurricane last year mm -hmm. because they had four successful wells on Lancaster, one after the other. They had 15,000 barrels a day on one of them, but you knew that it was going to produce a lot of oil. Now, I probably should have taken Hurricane out of the bucket list for the duration of last year. They raised over $500 million, which is the biggest ever raise for an oil company on AIM. Um, and at the time, people were saying, you know, the th shares got down to 30p. This was an absolute bottom for Hurricane when we put this one out in, in February this year. Why are you still uh, staying with it and everything else? Because timing for me isn't a problem. I know, I think Lancaster is going to work. First, court, first half of 2019, first oil. Therefore, what you've got is you've got a huge amount of value. It's pregnant with value, but that value may not come out. In June of last year, when they did this $550 million placing, there was in, bound to be indigestion. And I did write in the blog all the time about Hurricane, my value is still well over 100p. The stock is 30p. It's going to take a bit of time to unwind. If you were a day trader or a short-term trader or whatever, you'd have, done, you know, you'd have said, right, I'll leave that alone. Mm -hmm. Later in the year, it started to pick up. In the beginning of this year, people suddenly said, crikey, first half of 2019 is now less than a year away. And you know, I've You're not a day trader by instinct. You're a long-term hold, aren't you? Said I don't ever buy the shares, don't forget. You know. I'm going to come to that. <laughs> That's my next idea. Okay. So you don't trade these shares yourselves. Why are you not a, a buyer and seller of these, uh, of these shares? <laughs> yes, I mean, I mean, I think I'm going to have to put it at the bottom of the blog at some stage. You know. I, I, not never, a idea. I never buy or sell or deal in, in warrants or options or anything else, any of the stocks that I write about in the bucket list or the blog at all, period. Why? Why? Well, first of all, I came from an investment banking background where, where I, I was advising lots of different companies, sometimes at the drop of a hat. And in more recent terms that, that, you suddenly found that you were an owner of a stock that you were advising and you were writing on. I never want that to be a conflict of interest. And therefore, I just took the view that, you know, I wasn't going to be greedy and say, you know, I want to buy all these shares as well. More importantly, I was able to say to people, you know, if I'd written up about any one of these companies and they'd suddenly gone up by, you know, 20 or 30 percent in a day, as is quite possible, that I um, had bought them before I'd actually written uh, anything in the book. That you were front-running, that you're I'm ramping not, stocks. I don't want to be called a front-runner, a no. ramper, 
you know, people know that I don't. All the, all own, the chat board terminology. Yeah, 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 and I don't read the chat boards either, to be honest. That's so, a you know, I can't, wise thing. I can't. I haven't got time to get involved. I mean, I haven't got time to write a blog and do all these other things as well. But they're great fun because it's a you know, I meet. Yeah, but I meet a lot of really, really interesting retail investors in this process, mm. uh, and they are smart. I mean, I've done thirty years in investment banking, where I've met, um, you know, the oil analysts at uh, some of the biggest investment houses. There are many people out there in the retail sector who would be knock them into a cocked hat in terms of would ability. You, would you have kept your money in Pantheon if you had actually been investing in these stocks? For well, yourself? because I'm such a bad investor, I suspect, I probably would have run it just the same as I've run it badly here. Um, as I say, you know, one should have cut that a year ago, let alone back in, in January. So what year. do you do if you're that classic AIM investor? You put your money into a stock, it's underwater, it will be underwater for a while. What's your advice to those people once once they've seriously lost I, the money? I th well, what, I think what, what uh, you know, at that stage, you know, with all the investment books and things I've read over the years is the wisest tend to be the ones that say cut it. If you've got a, a wrong position, you should cut it. You always go back into it if things change. I mean, it may well be that Pantheon announced an absolute gusher in six months' time and, and things start to go well, in which case, you know, they're going to be self-funding. I'm worried about Fat Pantheon you know, we'll, we'll need more money and have to come back to the market. Mm -hmm. It's a self-fulfilling. It's like, you know, you, know you, you have to come back to the market for money to drill the next hole, which might. So, you know, the, you know the, there's no doubt that you should cut a position uh, as soon as possible. I think, you know, Stop loss orders 20% or whatever it happens to be. Yes, would you, you know, think 10%, 20%, 10% uh, You know, if you, if you lost 20% on the stock, you should, be, you, you, should, you should have cut it. And I should have taken... Pantheon. I should have probably taken Pantheon out of the list after the first year. So that's a learning. Um, which was, you know, a year ago in January. When so they stop loss orders at 20%, perhaps. Yeah, but I mean, don't forget, yeah, yeah, it's not a bad idea. You know, don't forget the numbers of these, um, some, some of these, uh, in the first, in, in, the, in the 2016 bucket list, um, as I say, um, Pantheon uh, was 750% seven, up, and out of the 13 stocks, you had to be up by 175% in the air to get in the top five. Mm -hmm. So that's what the movement that those stocks did. Now now things are slightly, slightly different. What do you think are the, the biggest worries about investing in AIM? Nil premium takeovers, uh, liquidity. What are the issues uh, for you? Well, I, I do worry about nil premium takeovers because there are times when, you know, if, the, if, if some of the bigger companies were any, anything like smart enough, they would be taking value out. And in fact... One of the things that I talk about in terms of, you know, we, where we write, we started right at the beginning of this uh, chat was that, you know, the oil, the oil price rise hasn't been taken into account by the market movements in, in some of these shares. Mm -hmm. uh, and, there, and there are there are one or two things there. But the bottom line is, when it gets to the stage where the price of an oil company is less than the value of that oil in the, in the ground, it's cheaper to go and buy the company itself. So DNO suddenly thought they liked the look of Ferro. I'm not surprised. It's one of the best companies. They bought it for 17% stake off DLEC. Uh, they li liked it. They put a tender in the marketplace the next day for 10% more. Sure enough, the institutions came running and filled up the book. In fact, they got 12.5%, so they bought 10%, and they came back the next day for the overspill, which was 2.5%. They've now got 27.5% of Ferro, and they've just had a $400 million bond issue just in case they would get a chance to, to buy the rest. You know, and there are other companies where I think that you would want, we would, I would worry. I mean, if, the, if any of the oil companies, the bigger oil companies, had a bit more guts, uh, I, I would say that they, 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 you know, I would go buy 25% of Hurricane in a, in a, in a Dawn Raid today at, at 50p. I think the value of Hurricane is so far in advance of what the share price is that, you know, providing it works. You know, they're saying... Providing it works is your risk, and I understand and that. And I'm sure that's exactly what keeps uh, AIM CEOs awake at night. Yeah, it does. And they the, can get the, taken the, over there are the, the, of, uh, plenty of stocks there where you, you could buy, you know, as, as a big in investing oil company and just, you know, to take the money out of it. Mm. It could be a starter pack in a country. Ameriser in Colombia, President or, or Echo in, in Argentina, if you're looking for exposure. There are bargains, bargains to be had if you're I mean, there major. are a number of bargains in bargain. I mean, okay. Fantastic. Um, we have talked uh, <laughs> way, way over our time. Okay. Uh, Malky, it's been a real pleasure uh, having you with us today. Uh, finally, a reminder that you're going to be speaking at our Oil and Gas Investor Evening at Brewers Hall, 17th of July, and you're going to be wrapping up some of these themes for us. 
Yeah, I'm happy to, to talk more about it and all the things that we haven't and talked take, about. Take, and take, take some take, questions. And I'll take as many questions as uh, they can throw at me if I can what, answer them. That's <laughs> what the punters want to hear, and you'll be taking yeah. some questions. I very much look forward Malky, to it. Malky, it's been a pleasure. Uh, that's it for now. If you'd like to see Malky speaking in person, Google a London Southeast Eventbrite page for free tickets and join us at our oil and gas investor evening of 17th of July at Brewers Hall near Moorgate Station in the city. Be quick. Uh, uh, quite seriously, tickets are going fast. Uh, we, lo we look forward to seeing you there. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.